I would like to help, if I can, to make it impossible. But with some imponderables, you never know. You can have it by accident, you can have it by mis miscalculation, you can even have it by incompetence of the, of the people who are in charge. But I, all I can say is that I try to help, if I can, to make it impossible. You don't hear much about nuclear weapons these days, about the dangers of nuclear weapons, about the catastrophe of nuclear weapons. In the first few years of the existence of the bomb, you heard much more about that. And people were horrified with it. And I guess with, it's now been almost 70 years, since 1945, people, I think, are <laughs> used to the existence of nuclear weapons. And I think this is very bad that, that people today do not fear the weapons that are incredibly more dangerous than they were in the beginning. There are many more nuclear weapons which much dangerous, much greater explosive power. And uh, it is really a, a phenomenon uh, that we should study why people don't fear nuclear weapons today so much as they did in the beginning. So uh, it's a question, I think, of, of learning. It's a question of knowing uh, uh, and uh, expanding the knowledge, disseminating knowledge about the dangers of nuclear weapons. I think what is needed today is <laughs> A greater doses of common sense, especially in those who are who are in charge of uh, the destinies of the world, the people who are in government, especially in the nuclear states. But they should know better, they should know more, and they should reflect on their responsibility and exercise the responsibility to prevent a nuclear war. I think we have a reenactment of the Cold War as it happened in the second half of the of last century. The element of the of believing in different systems, believing in different systems. Uh, there is there was a rivalry then in the back in the nineteen half of second half of last century, uh, an ideological difference between the two blocks. And today there is not, this is, is no longer, this element is no longer there. So I cannot say that the Cold War today is uh, similar to the Cold War that we had before. I think it's very much different. I think the two main uh, countries, the United States and Russia, they still, uh, they, don't, they don't have faith in each other. They are not, they, <laughs> they don't trust each other. Mm -hmm. But they don't have uh, the same uh, ideological characteristics in their governments and their systems as they had before. So it is a, a war of, of rivalry for ascendancy in the world. Uh, and on the, light, on the side of Russia, I think Russia also wants to uh, regain the kind of influence that it had before. And this also is an, an element that did not exist in the previous uh, Cold War. So it's a different Cold War. It is not the same thing. It's, I don't think we are descending into another, yeah. uh, to the same kind of Cold War. It's a different kind of Cold War. Well, I think it will be a very good thing if it is, because it is the last one that remains, the last constraint that remains uh, in the deployment of weapons, uh, at least in Europe, uh, weapons of, of a medium range. If the New START treaty disappears, there will be no constraint whatsoever on either side. And that, that would not be good. I think that would be a pity if this happens.
I'm not a, a scientist, I'm not a physicist, but from what I know of these things, it's very easy to build a nuclear weapon, nuclear explosive. It's not difficult to build a, a detonate the next one. The difficult thing is to procure it, mm -hmm. mm, but not to detonate it. So uh, it's not beyond the reach of terrorists, individuals or groups, organized groups, not beyond their reach to, to acquire a, a nuclear device. So the, the danger is there. I think the danger is, is always present. And you, I, you, I cannot think of anything more terrorific, no? To induce more terror than a nuclear bomb, to it explode in a, in a you know, in, a, in an inhabited uh, place. So uh, I think the danger, yes, is still there. <laughs> The weapons that are already existent are much more dangerous than a theoretical weapon that another country may get. So uh, I, I, it's not that a, I think it will be a danger if a country, in any country, not specifically Iran, any other country, beyond those that already possess nuclear weapons, I think it would be that very dangerous if any other country would acquire them. But I think we should be more focused on the weapons that already exist than in, on, on weapons that may one day exist. I think any country with a you know, reasonable degree of development in its industry in its, uh, is capable of acquiring a nuclear weapon. But I think the ones that already exist are much more dangerous than the ones that may one day exist. Well, according to what we hear from the governments of these three countries, I think there is this very uh, slim chance today that uh, an INF treaty could embrace all three, all three countries. And I think one of the main obstacles, perhaps, is the still large uh, difference between the arsenals of these two countries on one side and China on the other side. I think this is perhaps the most difficult uh, problem uh, to overcome if, if the, the, the governments of the, of the country would sit down and talk about that. But uh, today it seems that there is no, not much interest, especially on the part of China, uh, to participate in that because of that difference.